Voldemort Part 2 has a name, and that name is The Rising Darkness. Why is Part 2 called The Rising Darkness? Uh, I wish Mod Ed was here to answer that. You got his phone number? God, I wish I did. <laughs> <That's unreal. laughs> Baltimore One was received really well. It was fun to see everyone just run around and go everywhere all at once. The little frog quest players loved that. I loved that. That was a great little addition. We did a different take on thieving, more AFK, which was a bit sort of experimental, but it seemed like players really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed seeing everyone struggle with the Colosseum and fail repeatedly. No one completed it on the first day. That was kind of a special moment for us. There was things that we didn't really know how people would take. One of those was probably the capybaras. People love those capybaras. What well, can I curse? <laughs> In Valhalla the Rising Darkness, the tone shifts a bit from part one. It gets a little bit dark, a bit more gritty. You're going to dig more into the underlying going-ons of Valhalla. There's something for everyone. There's quests, there's new skilling, there's bosses to take on, and there's also a lot of landmass to explore and find new things. It's also a place of murder, mysteriously. My favorite environment in The Rising Darkness is probably Alderaan, just because there's so much to explore, as well as quite a fun color palette with all the grapes and the kind of orangey buildings you will see around there. It's sunny, there's grapes. People have really nice villas and expensive areas and just a nice kind of luxury island to live on. There's a lot of wine, a lot of grapes. If you don't like the wine, you can run off to the Hailstorm Mountains where you'll meet a group boss encounter that you can do with your friends, which is Fairly accessible for mid-level players. What's the boss's name? Hugh, Huey Cotal. Huey Coatl. Huey Cotal. Huey. Huey. The boss is called the Huey Coatl, but we just call it Huey. It's a big boss, big snake, dragon, bird boss thing coiled in the mountain itself. She's been laying there stagnant for way too long and has grown massive in size, almost becoming one with the mountain. Huey is a lady dragon. It is the lady dragon. Wow. And it's starting to cause a bit of problem to the dwarves and surrounding areas. And it is now the player's job to help put this massive snake to rest again. So the boss can be fought in a group of up to 20 players. It is possible to do it solo, but there are a couple of mechanics that definitely benefit from a group. Rewards from the group boss, there will be the Tome of Earth, there's the new Dragon Hunter wand, there's the new range set, and there's also a pet and a new seed for growing a herb, which will be used to create the Prairie Generation Potion. Maud Other's been working on the new Murder Mystery Quest in Alderaan, and she's done a great job of making this really intricate storyline um, with some cool little puzzles and a bit of deduction to figure out who did it. You can head over to the manor where the murder... <laughs> <laughs> the murder. <laughs> There's a lot of potential murderers in the murder mystery quest. I had a lot of fun creating suspicious NPCs. You add mysterious glasses to a dog, suspicious, straight away. Give someone a peg leg, how did that happen? Don't know, suspicious. Too much jewelry, super suspicious. Where did they get that? There's so many ways to make someone suspicious. <laughs> There's a lot of fun that happens in that quest that is just like, I don't know how to say that without giving too much away. Are you aware that there is a dog with fake glasses and a moustache? No, it must have uh, fooled me. By completing the murder mystery quest, you get access to the butler outfit with different variants of masks you can wear. With that comes a tray and a glass, which makes you stand like a butler, which I think is pretty neat. Mastering Mixology is also a new activity in the Rising Darkness. Here you'll be able to use your unused herbs to get some cool new potions and also some awesome unique rewards that ModMac has designed. The first is the pre-pot device. This allows the player to load up to five potions into the device. Just keep chugging those potions. The player can configure which potions trigger in which order, as well as setting loadouts for different situations. Secondly, we have potion storage, which is a new area of the bank which lets you store all of your potions and unfinished potions. The player can also purchase a secondary ingredient for a new potion, the goading potion. When drank, this potion will cause all monsters around you in a large area to become aggressive. The prayer regeneration potion is a reward from Huey Cottle and causes your prayer to restore over time instead of instantly. Think. The Alchemist Goggles provide you with a chance to save your secondary ingredients when you use them. We also have an Alchemist Cosmetic set, which allows you to fashion escape as you herbal. 
Lastly, we have the secondaries pouch, which provides a dedicated storage space for secondary ingredients. Higher up in the mountains, you'll find the storyline quest continuing called the Heart of Darkness. Together with Itzla, you'll be exploring, finding new things, defeating foes, and uncovering secrets that the old ones may have left behind. As you get deep into the quest, you and Itzla will explore the tapioc ruins left there by the old ones. There is a final boss of this quest, but we're going to keep the details close to our chest and let you uncover them on day of release. Agility. 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 Grapes. Agility. So the new agility activity is a low intensity activity that takes place on the remains of a giant worm. It's aimed at sort of mid to high level agility, I think. <laughs> and from it, you'll get the Barlamorian version of the graceful outfit, if you're good enough and cool enough to get it. I think some things that players will look forward to in the Rising Darkness is just the exploration. The new areas, all the cool new NPCs to chat to, it's all part of making the world feel so put together. Who are some of your favourite new NPCs within the Rising Darkness and why? Huey Quattle, if you, if you count her as like an NPC, which technically she is, she's definitely my favourite. My favourite new NPC is Clive. He resides on the top floor of the Alchemical Society and he's been banished there for making forbidden potions after hours. So um, Peggy 16. <laughs> My second contender for the favorite is probably the Moon Fanatic, which I'm not going to say anything else for. Just find him. I also really like the vineyard workers. They're working very hard carrying grapes all day. My grapes. The Rising Darkness has been an astronomical effort across the team. There's just a lot of interesting things to explore through the passion that came into this project from all of us together. My favourite part was creating the grapes. Lots of love and care have been put into it. Can't wait for you to see what it has in store when it releases. I went to a vineyard in preparation for this. 